right, so this is my Performer RPM from Edelbrock. Uh, this is a intake manifold I've been wanting to put on for a long time. Um, it's one I've been looking at getting, and I ended up picking it up with my 289 I picked up probably like six months ago. Uh, and today I'm going to finally try to use it, so I'm going to clean the thing up. So as you can tell, it's really, really nasty. There's a lot of dirt grime, and it's painted blue, which I don't really, I'm not really a fan of. So we are going to fix that, and we're going to clean this thing up, make it look pretty, and we're going to go ahead and slap it on my truck. So this is probably going to be a two-part video. I want to do really in-depth on how to clean these things up. Um, I will literally turn this nasty manifold, and I'll make it look brand new, and I'll show you guys how I do it. Um, it's really simple, really easy. Pretty much just got to strip the paint off it. I like the bare cast aluminum look. That's what I did with my Offenhauser that's on my truck right now. It's bare aluminum, wire wheeled, polished. It looks awesome. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing this one because I really, really like it. Uh, it's simple. Uh, you can do the exact same thing I do or you can do it. You can bring it down to bare metal and then you can prime it and paint it. Uh, either way, it'll still be the same process. So yeah, we're going to get right started to this. So this obviously has a couple modifications. As you can see, the intake is actually ported out. Uh, this had a 650 double pumper on it. It's a little bit big. Uh, so I actually ordered a couple sizes bigger uh, jets for my carburetor currently so I can kind of fill these ports up and also you can kind of see in here that these have actually these intake runners have been die ground out uh, not really the best job at whoever did these but uh, the job I guess will do so yeah today I'm going to go ahead I probably will actually take a Dremel and kind of like finish that so you can see the grooves inside there you want these to be almost glass smooth that's kind of like that polished finish um, you can almost imagine air and fuel travels through this so the smoother kind of path it has the easier it'll go down it's almost like sliding down a grass hill versus sliding down a slide you slide a little bit easier down a slide because it's a lot smoother surface grass kind of like grips you uh, but yeah i'm gonna pretty much resurface this clean all the paint off it and yeah put it on my truck so the reason being is because the current manifold i have literally runs this height it doesn't go any much higher than this and you can see i've got an extra like two and a half inches to go up um, on this high rise so this will probably give me a lot better power up top end uh, and hopefully uh, it'll fix a little bit of stutter issue i have i can run a bigger carburetor uh, a lot of good stuff and this will go right along with the heads that i will eventually do on the motor uh, but i'm not really getting in the whole engine build side of this thing yet but i did notice you guys i've seen a lot of c10 content and i thought i need to make a video with that truck so that's what we're doing today i thought it would be simple it's really easy to put an intake manifold on i wanted to do it so we're going to try it out I'm not sure about the carburetor i have i'm going to try bigger jets although it is kind of a baby carburetor it's an edelbrock 600 uh, but i do have stock heads so i don't want to put a crazy big carburetor on it if it for whatever reason runs like crap with this setup um, i will put a 650 double pumper on it with small jets that should fix my issue so before we even start doing anything to this manifold, uh, a big thing that needs to happen is all the paint needs to get stripped off of it. There's multiple ways you can do this. You can straight up take a wire brush, wire wheel on some sort of drill and or Dremel tool and just go through the whole thing. That kind of takes forever. And if it's been powder coated or really, really heavily painted, that becomes a real big chore. Uh, so I'm actually gonna go to the store and grab some paint stripper, uh, spray it on here, let it sit for about 20 minutes, 10 to 15 to 20 minutes, somewhere around there. Uh, hose it off, do a couple run throughs of that that'll pretty much boil all the paint off that'll make it really easy to get all the paint out of these small crevices uh you can do it with a wire wheel it just takes a long time so i'm gonna go get some paint stripper i've used this stuff before hopefully i can find it again if not we'll try out a new one uh but i'll take you guys to o'reilly's with me because i also need to pick up my jets that i ordered last night and uh we'll get some paint stripper for this guy all right so i just got back i got these from o'reilly's i doubt you can read that uh part number 1429 and right under it says 0.101 uh, that's the size jet I was talking about getting. So stock is 95 secondaries, 98 primaries, and then a step up because it's increments of three would be 0.101. 98 plus three is 101. Uh, so this is going to be in the primary, and then I'm going to move my primary that's already in here into the secondary. So I'll have a 101 primary and a 98 secondary. Uh, that'll probably work well with the bigger volume uh, intake I'm running. Hopefully, I don't know, if not, We'll just go back to square one and retune it, but uh, that should do us pretty good there. And then I didn't have the paint remover I usually use, so I got this. Uh, I'm going to try this out. Uh, it was just at Ransom Brothers. It was like 9 bucks or 7 bucks or something weird like that. Uh, so it was 15 minutes, so that should be good. Uh, but I wanted something easy I can just spray on. I don't want to like use a paintbrush. It's just a pain in the butt. I just want to spray it and then just power wash it. So this should work, and uh, we'll go ahead and we'll give it both of them a try.
so we'll just let that sit for a minute and yeah, blow it off. So a little update, I've got most of it pretty much clean as you can tell. I went ahead and I cleaned the top face and kind of polished that. Obviously it's got a lot of gouges and scratches that I need to take sandpaper to. But get this, so we've got nice little hole, helicoil one, helicoil two, and helicoil three. And get this, a helicoil in the water neck and only one of them. But regardless, this thing has four Healy coils in the whole thing. Like, that's ridiculous. And that's all I found so far. There's probably another one somewhere. And uh, as you can tell, it is die grinded and imported. And I am going to, like, sand this down smooth so it's like glass. Um, I'm going to fix that up. And then number one thing to look at when you buy an intake that's used is the ports. Uh, this was already assembled on a motor, so I couldn't see them. But you can see that you can totally tell they're ported and die grinded out by all the lines, the horizontal lines. That's from some sort of round rock spinning and grinding it out. You can totally see them. Uh, this side, pretty okay. Uh, you can tell, I mean, they're not really the greatest job. They're not, some of them aren't even round. Uh, they're not necessarily even either, so whoever did this did a really bad job. But this one is the one that concerns me because look at how trigger happy someone got right here. This is way up and around. Like, they don't match. I mean, the height of this is not even close to the height of this, so this could be an issue. Um, I really hope nothing no leaks come out of this but uh regardless I, I i think it'll be okay uh there's a lot of material removed from this that did not need to be that big i mean this thing was a 280 a bone stock bottom end 289 with giant 351 ported 351 heads with this intake manifold and the 650 double pumper on it and it had that big comp cam that i have in it uh so this thing had full of a ton of air and a ton of fuel and had like eight and a half to one compression it was garbage compression so this thing has definitely been ported out and messed with. It should be fine for what I'm using it for, but uh, yeah, you don't need to port stuff like that. And if you are porting something, make sure to draw lines and trace them. And when you're cutting, be careful. Just be careful not to do that. Because once you go too far, you can't go back. It's cast aluminum. So yeah, I, I mean, it should be okay. But regardless, uh, I ran out of uh, wire wheels because they kept demolishing themselves. So I got some more of these and then I got some plugs to go uh, in here and then on the back. And so I can use those. I got some finishing pads. Each one of these are like five bucks. So if you can get them at Harbor Freight, do. Because uh, these things are expensive when you go get them somewhere else. But uh, yeah, regardless, I've got most of it clean. I'm going to go ahead and clean a little bit more. You can also see it was ground down here. Uh, I imagine from like carburetor clear, like air cleaner clearance. I don't know, something like that. Uh, there was some sort of clearancing because he definitely shaved this down. I have no idea why. Uh, so what I ended up doing was taking the wire, one of these, and getting really, 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 like, drawing lines into it and going vertical and horizontal, and it almost kind of made the casting again. Uh, that's kind of one of those things you can do. So it almost looks kind of legit, but I don't know. I got a lot of work to do here. I might just sand it smooth. It's really, really bumpy, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to work on this whole thing, get the ports on the front, everything's glass smooth, so I have all good sealing issues, or I have good sealing. I'm gonna redo pretty much. I'm gonna make this glass smooth. Everything's gonna be smooth uh, But yeah, I'll come back when everything's pretty much done and uh, yeah, we'll see you then
All right, I think I've got it completely cleaned. Uh, cleaned up the front a little bit. And these are always pitted just from because water's right there. Uh, not a big deal there, but everything looks awesome. So it's pretty much ready to clear coat. Uh, the only thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna take a black and outline this. Uh, I might do black and then red. I don't know. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to do something with this the logo But right now I actually am going in and I'm actually taking my 220 sandpaper that I was using uh, I don't know if you guys did catch on this was uh, I think I already said it It was kind of like flattened for some reason and like ground down maybe for some sort of clearance of, of some sort not really sure why, but I did want to restore kind of that cast look to it. So I took the kind of coarse wire brush on the drill, went into it. You saw it kind of it pitted the hell out of it. And then I kind of just went horizontal and vertical to kind of get it uh, to look more castish like, I guess. So I think I came out really good. Uh, it looks pretty much original it was kind of bare i sanded it all down made sure my edges were smooth and then just came back i think it turned out pretty good so i'm kind of happy with that uh, i went ahead and i sanded this top plane here i need to go one probably up to 320 and then 600 just to make sure it's glass smooth uh, but this usually isn't a big deal um, and then right now i went ahead and i took the 220 and i'm just going in and out of this uh, the port right here just to make this as smooth as i can get it because uh, it seems really really rough but that's Ported. That's clean, pretty much right there. It's about as clean as I can get it. And then uh, that's unclean, so you can kind of see it's got some. You can you can hear the ridges, rigid edges. And then there's not really any rigid rigid edges over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that up, and I'll come back when I'm actually clearing it and painting this guy, and uh, we'll go ahead and finish this off. All right, so I've got most of this thing cleaned up. Looks good. Uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint the lettering because I just think I kind of want it to stand out and I want people to see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint just the letters, nothing or nothing else. So there's a couple ways I'm gonna do this. Uh, I got a makeup pad. Oh, let me borrow or not borrow, just kind of gave it to me. So you can steal a makeup pad. That's one way to do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna try the Q-tips first because these are just dime a dozen and they're a lot finer. Uh, this is really big, so I want to be able to kind of be really, 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 really careful and just just get the the letters in the cells if i get paint on the actual manifold i'm gonna have to scrape it off and start over with the wire wheel uh, so i want to make sure i do this right the first time uh so i'm gonna pretty much be using these four colors so the i've never really seen this done probably not the only one that's done this uh so we're gonna do performer and black which you see here um, and then i'm gonna do red white and then blue uh just kind of like american touch to it uh so the rpm will be red white and blue which i have here and the black and i think that'll also look pretty good it's all black red white and blue it's kind of what i want to go for i think that'll look good especially when it's all kind of wire wheeled and cleaned up uh so i think that'll look pretty good and uh yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and just start with the black spray it on a q-tip it'll be kind of just i'm gonna first go ahead and just kind of like roll the tip just so there's no like frayed ed ends just kind of like hanging out because uh, I don't want paint getting where I don't want it. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of roll this, spray some paint on it, and then go ahead and just lightly go over it. Look at that, it's all done. Looks awesome, everything's cleaned, polished. I sanded everything down. There's a couple little lines. I can take probably 600 and smooth that out a little bit, but this is, a gasket's gonna go over this, so it wouldn't really matter too much. I uh, cleaned up all inside the ports here, a couple other spots. I do need to kind of blow all the junk out of it. You can see there's some stuff in there that needs to get blown out. Otherwise it goes, it'll go right on my motor. But the raised lettering looks awesome. Um, I could do another coat over the black, but I don't really think I need to. Red, white, and blue came out awesome. It was super simple. It just kind of takes a little while. You got to be patient because just like when you're touching up a chip in the paint, you kind of have to like dab it a little bit, let it kind of get tacky, and then lay another one on top of it, kind of build it up. Same thing here. It's, it didn't look, it looked like crap at first, and then it slowly started to build, and I was like, okay, I can do this. So the Q-tip's what worked. I didn't end up using the pad because it's just too big and I didn't want to mess anything up. But this came out really awesome. And I'm really happy with that. And I'm going to go ahead and note that I realized that this used to say Edelbrock and raise letters. So for whatever reason, maybe for clearancing issues or someone didn't like the look, uh, this was shaved off and 
then it was just kind of like smooth. So I used the wire wheel, cleaned it up, and hopefully it looks a little bit more natural now at least. You can tell uh, it kind of has that pitting to it, so it almost looks like cast, which is kind of cool. You wouldn't really be able to tell, honestly, unless I told you. It looks pretty much cast. So yeah, everything came out really good. The real reason I wanted to make this video was I wanted to go really, really hard in depth on how easy it is to make something like this pop, because you saw this, this looked like junk when I first started with it. Had peeling paint, oil, grease everywhere, did not look good. Uh, RTV all over the place, cleaned it, and you can really just strip the paint off, wire wheel it, and then put your own little touches on it. And these things look awesome. You can do it with this kind of big manifold. You can do it with a stalker. The stock manifolds have Ford mark stamps on them that you can paint and raise the letters. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. Um, I've always liked this cast bare metal, bare aluminum finish. This always looks awesome. So yeah, I really hope you guys take into consideration doing this for yourself because it'll really, really make your engine pop. This is going to look so awesome in the engine bay with the gold valve covers. I might do a new air cleaner. Uh, it's just going to stand out. It's going to look awesome. So I'm really, really excited to put this on. And so that's what we're going to do tomorrow. First thing tomorrow, we're going to go ahead and put this guy on, pull the old one off. I do have a gasket kit already. I'm going to have to redesign the throttle because because this is like three inches taller of a manifold. So my throttle position is gonna go like that. So I'm gonna have to raise the back of it up somehow, maybe shorten or lengthen the linkage. I do have a one piece Heim joint linkage, uh, throttle linkage. So I'll show you guys how I made that. There is a video, I'll put a card up somewhere. You guys can check that video out. Um, it replaces all the weird throttle linkages that Ford has with these trucks. I'm gonna be putting all that together tomorrow. This is gonna be really, really cool. I've wanted to do this for a while. I have no reason why I haven't really, but now I have the time, so we're gonna do it. So like the video if you did enjoy it. Let me know what you do think down below in the comments. I really hope you guys consider doing something like this to your own manifold. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.